Today we will look at different modes of decay, that is alpha decay, beta decay and gamma emission. We will use a americium 241 for this, which is an alpha emitter. And we will also look at the uh, different decay energies. You can see americium 241's alpha particle has an energy of 5637 kilo electron volts. We will also look at a needle source of lead 210 which has 3720 kilo electron volts. We will also look at beta emitters, that is this here. This vial contains tritium or super heavy hydrogen, H3. It has um, a decay energy, the beta particle has an energy of a mere 5.69 kilo electron volts. And strontium 90, and that's a beta emitter as well, a pure beta emitter that um, has an energy, the beta particle has an energy of 195.8 kilo electron volts. We'll also look at gamma or beta and gamma emitters. The gamma emitter will be barium-133, which has an energy of 517 kilo electron volts. And the cesium-137, which is a beta and gamma emitter. The beta particle has an energy of 1175 kilo electron volts. And the gamma particle, yeah, uh, sorry, the gamma ray, of course, has an energy of 661 kilo electron volts. So let's see what the difference here is. First of all, let's look at alpha decay. The alpha particle consists of two protons and two neutrons, and this is already a complete um, atom's nucleus. It is just not a complete atom because it is missing the electrons. As you probably know, the ele the atom wants to be in an electrically neutral state, so um, for the two protons it will have to capture two electrons to be a complete and non-excited atom. So that's what the alpha particle does. It immediately captures electrons from other atoms, and um, this is also a very closely or tightly ionizing radiation, so it will sort of disturb, that is, ionize a lot of atoms on the way. So, um, yeah, it's very tightly ionizing. But it has a very short range, at least in air, which we will see now. Regarding the range in air, here's some aerosium, 241. And as you can see, if I hold it very close in front of the Geiger Miller tube, that will produce a very high reading that will even make the tube overflow. And if I move it away, you can see how the radiation reading decreases drastically. If we come closer again, so that's a very short range for the alpha particle. So here's the americium disk. There's one microcurie of americium, and if I hold that in front of the Geiger Miller tube. You will see that there's quite a lot of radiation that is measured by the Geiger Miller counter. If I hold just a very thin piece of aluminum foil in front of that, we'll see that nearly all of the radiation is blocked. Um, it is important to note that americium is also a gamma emitter, so what you can still um, see here is the reading as actually gamma emission. Let's try a thick slice of aluminum. And you can see that they're still about the same reading as with a very thin slice of aluminum. That is because of the pretty energetic gamma rays, as I said. We'll try a very thick slice of lead. And as you can see, and actually blocks a lot of the rest of the rays. So, yeah, but still, I mean, the energy of the alpha particles is uh, 5,637 kilo electron volts, and yet it's not, it is not very penetrating. It can't even penetrate a thin slice of aluminium. Now, if we have a look at the lead 210, 
it is much less in activity. It is just 0.01 microcurie compared to one microcurie of the americium. But you will see something similar will happen. You will place the one menu file in front. A lot less will be blocked in total because a lot of um, the emissions from lead 2 and a 10 are also beta particles and some gamma radiation. So we will again try a thick glass of aluminium. And you can see that much more of the radiation gets blocked. So it must either be pretty weak gammas or betas. If I use my lead again, you will note that most of the emissions are blocked. This is just background radiation, it's about 0.3 microsieverts in this area. Let's have a look at the beta decay. We will just talk about beta minus decay. That is an electron, a negatively charged particle, sometimes also referred to as a negatron. Um, we will cut out the positron emission and whatever, that's really too much for this video. So let's just check out the beta minus decay. And for the beta particle, if I use strontium 90 and place it in front of the guide molecule we we'll get a strong reading. We will still get a strong reading if we are further away from it. Not as much, of course, because the radiation scatters as well. It's not a straight beam that hits the Geiger Miller tube. But you can see we can still get a reading from further away. But we can't do this with a very short ranged um, alpha particle. Now, as we saw before, the beta particles seem to be much more penetrating and have a much longer range in air than the alpha particles. Let's take a look at strontium-90, which is a pure beta emitter. And as you can see, we got quite a high reading. Let's try our thin slice of aluminium foil again. And as you can see, that does nothing. It doesn't block anything. That's because um, all the emissions from strontium-90 are actually 195 kilo electron volts beta particles. Let's try a slightly thicker aluminium sheet. And you can see that does something. Does not block all of them, but a lot. Now let's try a very thick slice of aluminium again. And you can see, here most of the beta particles are blocked. As I said, they have 195 kilo electron volts, so they are not very hard and not very penetrating through aluminium. But now let's look at tritium. It's the gas in this container here. And as you remember, as you probably remember, it has just over 5 kilo electron volts. So let's see what happens. You can see this is background radiation. And if I put that in front of the tube, nothing happens. That's because even this little piece of plastic here has enough shielding capabilities to um, completely shield the, those very, very weak beta particles. So you can see it's not just the type of radiation, it's also very important to know the, um, the energy the particles or rays actually have to know their penetration powers.